Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to this special World Cup edition of Pointless Celebrities, the show where we are always striving to find the most obscure answers. Let's meet today's players. And couple number one. Uh, I'm Hope Powell, former national coach of England ladies, and this is Casey Stoney, current England captain. Couple number two. I'm Peter Shilton, this is Steve Ball. We were both members of the England World Cup squad in, uh, played in Italy in 1990 and got to the semi-final. <laughs> and couple number three. Uh, I'm Graham Lasso, I'm from Jersey, but I played for England in the 1998 World Cup as well as Chelsea, Blackburn and Southampton. And I'm Jonathan Pearce, football commentator, and I commentated on that semi-final in 1990. And finally, couple number four. This is George Cohen. I'm Jeff Hurst, and we played in the 1966 World Cup final and won it. Hey! <laughs> and these are today's contestants. Thank you all very much. We'll get to find out more about each of you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce on a one-man mission to make ignorance history. It's my pointless friend. It's Richard. Hiya. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Good evening to you. And to you. How exciting is this? Oh. I've rarely been more excited on an episode of Pointless, I have to say. The entire yeah. country has got World Cup fever. And what an incredible line-up there. You go along the line thinking, this is brilliant, and then you get to the end, and there's two guys who've won the World Cup right there. Yeah. I think, blimey, it's not bad going, isn't it? Uh, I have made one... So let's test your observational skills. Because it's a World Cup special, I've made yes. one change to my desk. Can you, you spot what it is? It's, it, it looks bigger. What, what have you done? If there's taller, something? Oh, I'll tell you, shall I? Instead of my computer, I've got the World Cup, the actual real World Cup. How about that? What about that? And I'm, I'm, I say it's the real World Cup. The guy who sold it to me said it was a real World Cup. I have no, <laughs> I have no reason to, to dispute that. I'm also, I'm wearing, uh, I'm not wearing normal pointless clothes. I spotted that as well. I'm wearing, because it's the World Cup, I'm wearing my Vanuatu kit. Brilliant, look at that. How about that? My favourite player, Brian, <laughs> Brian Kaltak, the, uh, the centre-back for Vanuatu. Unbelievably, Fabulous. unbelievably, Vanuatu not at the World Cup finals. No, not, uh, not <laughs> this got, year. They Shame. got knocked out by Tahiti and New Caledonia, Vanuatu, <laughs> neither of which are actual countries. Certainly not recognised by the UN. No, exactly. But incredibly exciting. What a brilliant lineup. Thank yeah. you all so much for coming on. It's a very exciting time and it should be a very, very exciting show. Very good indeed. Well, as ever, all our questions on Pointless have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here need to find the obscure answers those 100 people didn't get. Of course, everyone's trying to find a pointless answer, that being an answer that none of our 100 people gave. And each time that happens, we will add 250 quid to the jackpot. Now, as today's show is a celebrity special, each of our celebrities is playing for a nominated charity. We start off with a jackpot of £2,500. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. All you have to remember is that the pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated. So do what you can to make sure that's not you. Our first category today is... Words. It's going to be a words round. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words ending in A-N-D as they could. Words ending A-N-D, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any word in the Oxford Dictionary of English that ends A-N-D, please. As always, we're not allowed proper nouns like England or Scotland or trade names or anything like that. Just any word in the Oxford Dictionary of English that ends A-N-D. There are huge amounts of pointless answers here. There's 70 pointless answers on this list alone. So there's, uh, there's lots of obscure ones out there if uh, someone wanted to take a risk. OK, Hope, welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, you have led the England ladies football team to four European Championships, two World Cups. Yeah. And Team GB, of course, at uh, 2012. Yeah. How was that? Fantastic, fantastic. Highlight of my career, I would say. And now you've moved on from England. Yeah. Are you... I don't know, do, have any men's clubs been in touch with you? No. I mean, no. that's going to happen soon, isn't it? Sooner um, or later. Maybe, maybe. I think, um, yeah, certainly in the future, maybe down in the lower leagues. Um, but wait and see, I think. Well, if they're on the phone to anyone, it'll be you. Now, Hope, <laughs> words ending A-N-D. Um, command. 
command appropriate enough? Let's see if command's right. I think it is right. Let's find out how many people said command. Is right. Eleven. <laughs> Not bad at all, Hope. Eleven for command. Well played, Hope. So scary on that first podium, especially with the words around. So it's a terrific answer. Absolutely. But yeah, that's the answer of a manager, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Come on. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed, Bully. Welcome to Pointless. Uh, you were there in, in Italian '90. That was a sort of. It all changed after that, didn't it? That, that won a whole lot of new fans for football, didn't it? Yeah, Italian it was a bit, a bit of disruption uh, before we actually went to. The World Cup with Bobby Robson with all these uh, all things that happened in the press, but uh, we put that to one side and it was a unit and we all worked together and we all played together. And to be there, it was absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. And um, in the club side as well, back at Wolves, you were I mean you were an amazing goal scorer, weren't you? I mean you, how many goals did you score? Uh, Three hundred and six in five hundred sixty-one appearances. It's like fifty goals a season. Which <laughs> is unheard of. Yeah, it won't be. Well, I don't think it'd be done now with two consecutive seasons, 50 and 52, but uh, I was a bit lucky, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. nicely said, isn't I'll it? I'll tell you yeah. what, 50 in a season once may be a bit lucky. Yeah. 50 in a season twice. That's messy. That's just careless. Style. Yeah. Uh, Bully, what are you going to go for? Words ending A and D. I'll go for a plain word called bland. Bland. Bland, says Bully. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many about 100 people said bland. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven, not bad. Yeah, lacking strong features, bland. It's quite a big score. Mm. Mm. Graham, welcome to Pointless. Good to have you here. 1998. Or do you ever look back, think back on that Argentina game and just wonder what might have happened if you'd taken a penalty at the end? <laughs> We would have still come home on the same plane. <laughs> <Really? laughs> um, <laughs> but it was a it was a fantastic game. Obviously, David Beckham getting sent off. Yeah. Sol Campbell when we had ten men in extra time, scoring a perfectly good goal. Yeah. And then as he scored, we all celebrated. I'd actually come off um, and was on the bench, um, and we all cheered, got up, celebrated, and then within two seconds we're yelling, "Get back, get back!" because the Argentinians were counterattacking. Yeah. And then obviously the penalty shootout, so the heartache. But um, it was an incredible experience uh, being part of it. And we had a fantastic team, great team spirit. Fantastic. Well, words ending A and D, almost as exciting. Yeah, I would <laughs> say, well, more so in some ways. In many ways, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm, strand. Strand, says Graham. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said strand. 27. Well, 11 is our low score, 27 are high. You passed 27, 17. Yeah, to leave somebody somewhere. To, yeah, you know, strand. It's quite hard with these rounds yeah. to, to define what words mean. Or, Rich, a beach. Yes, yeah. or, yeah, particular roads, yeah. 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 Strand. Yeah. Tell you what, Hope's score is looking better and better as the round goes more on more as well. Commanding, yeah. in fact, yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff, welcome back to Pointless. Great to have you here. I mean, unbelievable privilege to have you here. I mean, obviously, you won the World Cup, but better than that, you scored a hat-trick in the final at Wembley. What does life do for you after that? Um, well, I think it's part of... It's not just a game of football, it's a, it's a national event. Yeah. It transcends anything. You, it, people still talk about it, uh, even today. You meet people in the street who watch the game or, or different parts of the world, and it's a huge event that people remember forever. I mean, to have given so much intense pleasure to a whole nation, I mean, that's just an incredible thing to be able to do. Thank you. Well, thank you. Now, words ending A and D. Overland. That, can I just say, is the one I was... I was oh, I had really? Yeah, yeah, I had that yeah, one yeah. in my back drawer. Now. Overland, says Jeff. Let's see how many of our 100 people said that. 11. Well, 11, our low score at the moment. Overland passes that. Five. Very well done, indeed. Yeah. Five. Well played, Jeff. That's a World Cup winner right there, isn't it? Overland, terrific answer. Yeah, to, to travel across land. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores as they stand. Five, the best score of that pass. Very well done, Jeff. Then up to 11, where we find Hope. 
and Casey, then up to 17, Graham and Jonathan, then 27, Bully and Peter. You're not wildly out in front there, Peter, but a really nice low score from you might keep you in the game. Uh, best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, George, a very, very warm welcome to you. Thank you. Grand to have you. Now, your, your family just can't get enough of World Cups. You're always winning them, and not just and in different sports as well. Ben, of course, picked up the World Cup. He's your nephew, isn't he? That's right. The Rugby World Cup. That's right. He's my youngest brother's youngest son. Excellent. And uh, you maintain strong links with Fulham. In fact, you're kind of maintaining a link with Fulham today just by being here. Richard, of course, being That's a right. huge Fulham fan. I would say, yeah, George is... Uh, I mean, it's all well and good winning the World Cup and everything, but, uh, but playing for Fulham, I think, probably trumps it. <laughs> I, think, I think Jeff would probably swap his uh, hat-trick in the World Cup final to have pulled on the, uh, the lily-white shirt at some point. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 I knew it. I knew it. Uh, now, George, words ending A-N-D. Highland. Oh, it's good. Yeah, Fulham, Highland. you see. Fulham. Yeah. Highland. Well, there you are. You're on five. The high score is at the moment on 27, Peter and Bully. If you can score 21 or less, you won't even become our high scorers. Let's find out how many people said Highland. There is your red line. It's right. You've done it. Very well done indeed. Look at that. Six. <laughs> The two best scores of the round so far on that far podium. Your total is 11. Very well played, George. They're in business, don't they, on podium four? Oh, yes. Yeah, Highland, which is a land that is high. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I can, well, I can see that. Yeah, you see where they got that yeah, in Yeah, from, it's, good, it's good. Yeah, yeah. That is good. Uh, Jonathan, welcome to Point. It's good. To, how, many, how many World Cups have you commentated on? Um, seven, I think. So going back to, what, 86? Uh, no, 90, 94, 8, 2, 6, 10, 6. Six. Uh, were you there for all of them? Or... Yeah. Oh, I see, that's good. I was there. It was great. In fact, we, I stayed in the same hotel as they did. Uh, there were six of us who were allowed to stay in the same hotel. Oh, fantastic. And it was great fun to be that close to the players. It was I wonderful. Bet. I bet. And obviously, you, you commentate on radio and TV. Which do you, do you have a preference? I love... I was going to say I love radio because you use words, but... <laughs> oh, I know what now. you mean. I know <laughs> what you mean. I'm too sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh, OK, now, Jonathan. Yeah. Words ending A-N-D. I'm going to go for wand, as in magic wand. Nice, and nice to have that explained as well. <laughs> <laughs> OK, there you are, you're on 17. The high score is on 27, Peter and Bully. So nine or less sees you through, straight through. OK, there's your red line. Let's see how many people said wand. Oh, 52. Oh. Wow. 52 for one. Takes your total up to 69. That is a big score, is it? Yeah. Especially as the one man here who's made his entire living out of, uh, out of wielding words. 52. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you don't play for Fulham, I'm afraid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Peter. Peter, very warm. Welcome to you. You played in three World Cups. In fact, you played... Uh, I see after 66, probably the most famous England game, the Hand of God. Game. Don't remind me. Oh, have you forgiven him? No. No. <laughs> no. And probably won't do, but... Uh, it, was a, it was a game for all the wrong reasons. We, the referee and linesman just let us down. They, they were really terrible on the day. Extraordinary. And you were, you were closest to it. You know, no-one saw it more closely than you. I didn't actually see it, no. No. I, I was sort of just concentrating on the ball and... Yeah. I just looked at the rest of the players and they were all sort of chasing the referee who was flying up the pitch as quick as he could, uh, trying to get away from it. No, it was, uh, it was just complete injustice in, in a, the major tournament, you know? yeah. Um, now then, Peter, you're on 27. The high score is now on 69, Graham and Jonathan, so 41 or less keeps you in the game. Uh, grassland. Oh, that is good. Grassland. There is your red line. Get below that with grassland. I have a hunch you might, and you're in the next round. Let's see how many people said grassland. It's right. That's a great answer. It's a pointless answer, Peter. <laughs> uh, that's 250.
50 pounds to today's jackpot takes the total up to 2,750 pounds. It scores nothing. It leaves your total at 27. That's a miracle. That is fantastic. <laughs> Very well done That's indeed. A brilliant answer, Peter. Very, very well played. Yeah, terrific answer. And I have to say, when Maradona came on Pointless Celebrities, he got knocked out in round one, so uh, you've got your revenge on him. <laughs> I'm pleased to hear that. Yeah. So, yeah. He went for hand in this round. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Casey, very warm welcome. You've been so patient waiting all this time while we've gone all the way down the line and back up. Great to have our current ladies football captain. How long have you been captain for? Uh, nearly two years now. Enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, very much so. It's, it's, it's a great job, it's a privilege, so something I, I love yeah. doing. And you, you captained Team GB as well at London 2012. I did, I was really lucky I got to walk the team out at Wembley when we played there, so it was a highlight of my career. I mean, you had a little stint as manager as well, player manager at Chelsea. I have, um, not very long, thankfully, because it wasn't something I enjoyed, but yeah... It's I, quite I, tough. Yeah. yeah, it was. And it was tough when you're part of the team as well, I mean... Yeah, yeah. manage, play, coach, it's yeah. not easy, but I did it for the team. <laughs> Very good indeed. Well, lovely to have you here. Real treat. And there you are on 11, the high scorers on 69, Jonathan and Graham. You've had a little bit of time to come up with a blinding answer. Too what long. are you going to say? <laughs> Underhand. That was going to be yeah. my other one. Oh, was that another one? Yeah, yeah, that was my other one. Um, <laughs> underhand. There is your red line. If you get under that, you are through to round two. Let's see how many of our 100 people said underhand. It's right. Through you go. Very well done indeed. 12. 23 is your total. Very well done. Well played, Casey. Safety through. Yeah, done in a, in a secretive or dishonest way, underhand. Um, how many people here have been captain of their football team at some point? Most people. And what do you wear when you, when you are? Yes, armband. Armband, armband. 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 would have been a pointless answer. One of the many. Let's take a look at some of the other ones. Armband would have been pointless answer. Chateaubriand would have been... Uh, if someone had gone for that, that would have been classy. Oh, I'm going for one afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been quite a cocky one to go for, I think, in round one, I have to say. Handstand would have been a pointless answer. You could have had hat stand as well. Longhand, motherland. Let's look at a few more. Noseband would have been a pointless answer. Theatre land you could have had. Wasteland, there's, a, there's lots of others, actually. I'll give you a few. Um, you could have had uh, Bogland, Clubland would have been a pointless answer. Deckhand, Hatband, Kickstand, like on a bike, that's a pointless answer. Showband, Shadowland, there's loads. Scrubland, all sorts. There's loads and loads of pointless answers there. Let's take a look at the, uh, the biggest scorers, the ones that most of our 100 people said. One. <laughs> It wasn't quite one. <laughs> one. One was about fifth or sixth, so it wasn't too bad. Band was 65. Sand was 66. And right at the top, land with 74. Thanks very much indeed. So at the end of our first round, the pair we're saying goodbye to, Jonathan and Graham. You've only just got here. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, wand. Not so magic after all, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> I'm, I don't know what to say. Who knew? I thought being, being on instead of and, people might have forgotten mm. about it. Yeah. Mm, I blame Harry Potter. And I did it English yes. at university as well. Oh, Jonathan. No. Oh. What, a, what a disgrace. Not at all. Well, no, great, you'll have to come back. We That's all. That's we haven't all. just been beaten, we've been annihilated, look. <laughs> but we've got, you know, we're going to learn a lot. We're going to learn a lot from this experience. Learn we're going to come, come back stronger. Back. Exactly. We're going to rebuild. We're going to take each experience <laughs> game by game. That's yeah. great. I tell you guys, when you, when you two come back in four years' time, I think you're going to be a much more cohesive <laughs> unit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, well, thanks so much for playing. Jonathan and Graham, it's been wonderful having you here. Thanks so much. But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. And so three pairs remain. At the end of this round, obviously, we have to say goodbye to another pair. Jeff and George, what a performance. Our World Cup winners over there on Podium 4. Winners of the first round as well on Pointless Celebrities. Fantastic. Uh, Peter and Bully. Bully. Peter saved you there. He did, to be fair. He was uh, a uh... to start with, but he, he came through good. He came good. And uh, very strong performance, very consistent from Casey and Hope there on the first podium. This is going to be an excellent round. Best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two is... Sport. Oh, no. God. Oh, dear. <laughs> sport. Can you all decide on your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Sporting losers and the people who beat them. 
sporting losers and the people who beat them, Richard. On each board, we're going to show you the names of six sporting losers uh, who lost in a famous sporting contest. We just need you to tell us which team or person beat them, please. There's going to be six on each board. It's going to be 12 in all to have a go at home, so very best of luck. OK, so we are looking for the names of the people who famously beat these opponents. And here's our first board of six. 1958 Formula One Drivers' Championship, Sterling Moss, MH. Olympics 1980, 1500 metres, Steve Avett, SC. Grand National 1956, Dick Francis, DD. The Rumble in the Jungle, 1974, Muhammad Ali, GF. 2005 Champions League Final, AC Milan, LFC. And the US Masters 1996, Greg Norman, NF. I'll read those again. 1958 Formula One Drivers' Championship, Sterling Moss, MH. Olympics 1980, 1500 metres, Steve Avett, SC. Grand National 1956, Dick Francis, DD. The Rumble in the Jungle, 1974, Muhammad Ali, GF. 2005 Champions League Final, AC Milan, LFC. And the US Masters 1996, Greg Norman, NF. OK, there we are. Now, Hope. Hope, what do you make of that board? I think I know some of them. Two, I don't think I know, so... It's OK. It's OK. OK, what do you think you're going to go for? Uh, Olympics 1980, Sebastian Coe. Sebastian Coe, says Hope. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Sebastian Coe. It's right. 26. 26. Well played, Hope. Yeah, they both won each other's event, really, in that, uh, in that Olympics. Co won the 1500, which is Ovet's event, and Ovet won the 800, which was Co's event. Thanks very much. Now, Bully. Thanks, Hope. <laughs> 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 yes, there's a few there. Um, I think the one I'll have to go for is probably, if it is right, the Rumble in the Jungle, 1974. Is it George Foreman? George Foreman. George Foreman says bully. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said George Foreman. It is right. 26. I only scored 50 for George Foreman. Yeah, the most famous fight of all time, I would say, the Rumble in the Jungle. When We Were Kings, the documentary about it is absolutely terrific watch. Uh, now, Jeff. Jeff, this is your board. If you want, you can talk us through all of it and fill in all the blanks for us. I know some of them. Um, some of them I think are easy, so I'm going to go uh, take a bit of a chance, a little bit of a chance, and go for what I think is the most obscure and difficult, and that's the uh, Formula One Drivers' Championship, Mike Hawthorne. Mike Hawthorne, says Jeff. A lot of nods from people who didn't say it. <laughs> uh, Mike Hawthorne, let's see if it's right, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Mike Hawthorne. It is right. Well, 50 our high score, 26 our low. You pass 50, you pass 26. Look at that. Very well done indeed, Jeff. Eight. That's a great answer. Well played, Jeff. Here have three answers from that last podium so far, and they've all been in single figures, so terrific work. Yeah, Mike Hawthorne beaten by one point. And a couple of races previously, they threatened to disqualify Hawthorne for reversing, and actually Sterling Moss stood up for him and said, no, I, I won't let you disqualify him, and that's what won Hawthorne the title in the end. Let's take a look at the rest of the board. The Champions League final, uh, LFC is... <laughs> Liverpool Football Club. Really Would have scored you 43. Um, the NF is Nick Faldo. He would have scored you 29. Uh, and the best answer, that was the, the Grand National where Dick Francis was riding Devon Lock and it collapsed just by the, uh, the finishing post. And ESB won it and it was ridden, I almost said driven there, and it was ridden by Dave Dick. And it's a pointless answer. For the first time in my life, I'm going to say well done at home if you said Dave Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. Once again, it's that far podium leading the field there. Lovely low score from you, Jeff. Eight, then up to 26, where we find Hope and Casey. And then up to 50, Bully and Peter. Peter, once again, we need a low score from you. <laughs> Best of luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, let's put six more opponents on the board, and here they come. 1995-6 to six, Premier League, Newcastle, MU. 2009 Golf Open, Tom Watson, SC. Wimbledon semi-finals, 2001, Tim Henman, GI. BDO 1983 World Darts Championship final, Eric Bristow, KD. 2006 Olympic snowboard cross, Lindsay Jacobellis, TF. And 2007 Formula One Drivers' Championship, Lewis Hamilton, 
KR. I'll read those one last time. 1995 to 6, Premier League, Newcastle, MU. 2009 Golf Open, Tom Watson, SC. Wimbledon semi finals, 2001, Tim Henman, GI. BDO 1983 World Darts Championship final, Eric Bristow, KD. 2006 Olympic snowboard cross, Lindsay Jacobellis, TF. And 2007 Formula One Drivers' Championship, Lewis Hamilton, KR. Now remember, we are looking for the names of the people who famously beat these opponents, George. Formula One drivers. I think it's Kiki Raikkonen. Kiki? I think it's that. Kiki Raikkonen. Something like that. Kiki Raikkonen. Well, you are the low scorers. The high scorers on 50 are Peter and Bully. You ought to be scoring 41 or less. Kiki Raikkonen. Let's see if it can get you below that red line. Is it right? That's not quite right there. George scores you the maximum of 100 points. I'm sorry, oh, it takes your total up to 108. Uh, I can't accept it, George, uh, I'm afraid. If it was up to me alone, you'd be sailing through to the jackpot round, whatever happened, because of the right. Fulham connection, but uh, they, the BBC won't let me. Right. <sighs> what can you do? My hands are tied. Um, now then, Peter, the high scorers now. George and Jeff on 108, you're on 50. So 57 or less sees you through to the head-to-head. Yeah, uh, I'd have been all right on the first board, I think. Um, there's only one I'm really sure about, and that's obviously the Premier League one, uh, Newcastle. But I don't know if that's going to be a, as low as we want. I wish I just knew one of the others. I'm going to have to go for the top one, Premier League, Newcastle, Man United. Manchester United, says Peter. OK, well, you're on 50. You want to be scoring 57 or less. There's your red line. If you get below that... You're in the head-to-head. -head. Let's see if Manchester United can get you down there. It's right. Oh, you've done it. 53. 53, 103. Very well done indeed. That's an unbelievable score, isn't yeah. it? 53 for that. Yeah, Newcastle were 12 points clear at one point, and they end that title race and managed to throw it away. Thanks very much. Now then, Casey. I'm going to go Wimbledon semi-finals, and I believe it's Goran Ivanisevic. Goran Ivanisevic. There you are on 26. The high scorers at the moment are Jeff and George on 108. 81 or less sees you through. Goran Ivanisevic. There is your red line. Get below that. You're in the head-to-head. -head. How many people said it? Very well done. 41. 47, your total there. <laughs> Another terrific answer. Casey yeah, beat him in the semi finals. He was uh, the only wild card ever to win Wimbledon. It was famously rain delayed. It went over about three days, and Henman was going to win, and he didn't. It's tragic, but he was a, such a terrific player, mm. Henman, and mm. uh, that was uh, probably his best opportunity. Um, now, let's fill in the rest of these. Uh, I suspect you'll know some of them when I read them out. I, I couldn't take Kiki Raikkonen, and it's Kimi Raikkonen, I'm afraid, uh, George, ooh. the Finn. Um, that's yeah. tough. Would have scored 20 points. Would have been a very good answer. Uh, Tom Watson lost in a playoff to Stuart Sink. Would have scored you two. Uh, Eric Bristow lost to a man I've got a signed photo of next to my dartboard. Keith Della would have scored you 18. And Lindsay Jacobellis lost two. Very well done. If you got this, it's a pointless answer. Tanya Frieden. Terrific answer. If you got that. Thanks very much indeed. So at the end of our second round, I'm so sorry to say the pair leaving us with a high score of 108. It's Jeff and George. Oh, I'm sorry again. Kiki, right? You were so close there. Yes. I thought he got yeah. the surname right. I know. Oh, sorry, the Christian name, not the surname, but yeah. very close. Yeah. Never mind. Well, it's been wonderful having you on. Thank yeah, you so terrific. much for coming and Thank joining you. us. Great to have you here. Well, George you. and Jeff, wonderful. <laughs> But for Peter and Bully and Casey and Hope, it's now time for our head-to-head. -head. Congratulations, Hope and Casey, Peter and Bully. You are now one step close to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,750. So now we have to decide who's going to play for that jackpot, and to do that, you are now going to go head to head. The difference is you can now confer before you give your answers, and the first pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. So it's, it's kind of half time. Uh, we have two titans of the ladies' game, two titans of the gentlemen's game. 
Um, Hope, what would your what would your stirring words be at this point to Casey? What would your your, your team talk? Come on, <laughs> yeah. that is it. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I tell you, I've seen, I've seen the inside of a few dressing rooms at half time. They don't just go, come on. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Come on. Uh, Peter and Bully, I mean, I don't know, which, what, what's scarier? Standing here now, or Schultz maybe facing a, a penalty shootout, maybe Bully taking a penalty shootout? What, what do you think? <laughs> Standing here now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We like to think we knew what we were doing when we played football, but at the moment we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> well, join the club. Uh, best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> OK, here comes your first question, and it concerns... men as women. Men as women. Richard. We're just going to show you five pictures now of actors portraying women. We need you to tell us the name of the actor that you see. So what's the most obscure of these five actors you're about to see? OK, thanks, Richard. Let's reveal our five men playing women, and here they are. We have A... B... C... D... and E. OK, there we are. Five men as women. Hope and Casey, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you will go first. We're going to have to go with one we know, so we're going to go B, Paul O'Grady. B, Paul O'Grady. OK, now then, Peter and Bully, you can talk us through the whole board, if you like. <laughs> yeah, OK. Yeah. Just on the t tip of the tongue is, is D, but just can't get the... Um, he used to say, I love you, but I like you, or something like that, but I can't get his, get his name. But we, we know the other couple. We know a couple, we know a couple of the others, didn't we? Are we going to go for the E? Yeah, go on, Bully. Shall we? E, yeah. We think we're going for E. I think he's Danny LaRue. Danny LaRue. So we have Paul O'Grady and we have Danny LaRue. Casey and Hope said Paul O'Grady. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said that for B. Paul O'Grady. It's right. 50. 50 for Paul O'Grady. Peter and Bully, meanwhile, have said that E is Danny LaRue. Danny LaRue. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Danny LaRue. It is right. Is he going to beat 50? Yes, it is. Look at that, 42. Very well done. Ooh. You've stolen it there, Peter and Bully. Very well done indeed. After one question, you are up 1-0. Nicely played both teams there, though. Um, D, the one you're thinking of, and it was, uh, oh, you are awful, but I like you, Dick Emery. Dick Emery, the name you're looking for. Would have scored you 37 points. C is the biggest scorer on the board. I think everyone knows that. Les Dawson, of course. Would have scored you 57. And A uh, is uh, from the League of Gentlemen, and it's Steve Pemberton. And he would have scored you three points. Before we do the next question, just one word each. Do you think England can win the World Cup? <laughs> that's, not, that's not a word. Hope so. <laughs> that's two words. Is that Hope, Hope and Casey? Hope so, too. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Casey, you're going to be the only person who gives me a one word answer here. That's all I need. No. There we go. <laughs> Uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. Well, here comes your second question. Hope and Casey, you have to win this one to stay in the game, so very, very best of luck. It concerns... Shakespeare plays. Shakespeare plays, Richard. Yeah, even more fun than that, we're going to show you the names of five Shakespeare plays now, but in anagram form. Can you unscramble them and give us the name of the most obscure play? Very best of luck. Excellent. OK, here are our five Shakespeare play anagrams. And we've got Halt Me, Ooh Tell, Tea Oil Is Yuck, Regal Kin, and Wherever Is My Sword of Tin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read this again. Halt Me, Ooh Tell, Tea Oil Is Yuck, Regal Kin, and Wherever Is My Sword of Tin. Now, Peter and Bully, you will go first this time. Yeah. Um, we're going for number two. Othello. Othello. Othello, say Peter and Bully. Now then, Hope and Casey. It's the top one, isn't it? Yeah. Is that, 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 is that,
it's not, is it? My tongue is not doing that, it's not. Tea or Top one, Hamlet. You're going to go for Hamlet, the top one. So we have Othello versus Hamlet. Peter and Bully went for Othello. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said Othello. <laughs> 70 for Othello. <laughs> 70, that's, that's higher than I was expecting. Um, now, Hope and Casey have gone for Hamlet. Halt me. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said Hamlet. You have to win this one, remember. He's right. Oh, and you've done it. Well done. 66 for Hamlet. Back in the game. Look at that. You've broken back. Hope and Casey, very well done. Exactly what you needed to do after two questions. It's one all. Very well done. We're going to golden goal now. Let's uh, fit in the rest of this board. Uh, how are you on the rest of this board? Have you got any um, others? I go the one from the bottom, um, King Lear. I can yeah, Regal Kin is King Lear. Uh, that would have scored you 47. Tea oil is yuck, is as you like it. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, that would have scored you 10 points. The best answer on the board Got is it. the bottom one, wherever is my sword of tin. Merry Wives of Windsor. Is Merry Wives of Windsor. It's got three points. Well done if you got all of those. Oh, terrific good. stuff. OK, now it all comes down to our decider. The third and final question. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. It concerns... Sir Elton John. Sir Elton John, Richard. Just five clues now to facts about Elton John. Whichever team gives us the most obscure answer is going through to play for the jackpot. So very, very best of luck to both teams. OK, let's reveal our five clues, and here they come. We have got Strictly Come Dancing Judge, who appeared as a dancer in video for I'm Still Standing. Title of his debut solo album, released in 1969. The film producer with whom he entered into a civil partnership in 2005. The lyricist he's worked with since 1967, after they both responded to an advert in New Musical Express. And the middle name he adopted when he changed his name to Elton John in 1967. I'll read those all one last time. Strictly Come Dancing Judge, who appeared as a dancer in the video for I'm Still Standing. The title of his debut solo album, released in 1969. The film producer with whom he entered into a civil partnership in 2005. The lyricist he's worked with since 1967, after they both responded to an advert in New Musical Express. And the middle name he adopted when he changed his name to Elton John in 1967. Hope and Casey, you will go first. Go for it, I'm not really up with Elton no. John, no. Uh, and he was Hope, so I'm going to have a guess for the film producer whom he entered into a civil partnership with. I think it's David Furnish. David Furnish, say so Hope and Casey, David Furnish. Peter and Bully, do you fancy talking us through the rest of the board? <laughs> See if you can have a crack at No. I can't think of his name. I think it's Craig Levine. No, it's not Craig Levine. It's, it's Craig, Le Craig. It's not Bruno. Struggling for a name here. Eh? Struggling for one. We're just going to say uh, solo album Candle in the Wind. Candle in the Wind, you're going to say for his solo album. Now, Hope and Casey have said David Furnish, the film producer with whom he entered into a civil partnership. Let's see if that's right, David Furnish. Wrong. It's right. <laughs> Good answer, 31, Hope and Casey. <laughs> Peter and Bully are hoping that Candle in the Wind is the name of his first album. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many people said Candle in the Wind. No. Oh, sorry, I'm afraid an incorrect answer, but very well done. Hope and Casey, after three questions, you are through to the final 2-1. Yeah, well played, Hope and Casey. Yeah, a tough question to go for that, guys. It's actually the toughest question on the board. Uh, Empty Sky was the name of his very first album, and that would have scored you two points. Now, the, uh, the judge you were looking at, you spent a long time trying to think uh, of his name. It's Craig someone. You can tell your football uh, players because he went by Craig Levine, who I think was Hearts manager, wasn't he? Uh, <laughs> but it was Craig Revel Hallward was the oh, name of the man you're looking for. But it's the wrong answer. <laughs> and the right answer was someone else you mentioned, and it's Bruno Tonioli would have scored you 12 points and would have seen you through to the jackpot round if you said Bruno Tonioli. Uh, the lyricist is Bernie Torpin. He would have scored you 20 points. Uh, and his official name is Elton Hercules John. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, would have scored you Obviously. Obviously. <laughs> four points. So very, very well done if you said that. 
Do you think, actually, I'm, I was beginning to think whether it's an expense, because I'm not sure people are noticing that we've moved the entire studio to Brazil. It doesn't look like we have, does it? I suppose it doesn't. You well, think well, it would well, feel well, just like a normal show? Well, they can't see how hot it is. Oh, it's boiling. If yeah. you looked, if the camera's turned round, they can't, unfortunately, because of time. <laughs> but you'd see Copacabana Beach just behind us there. Yeah, just over there. Oh, that's lovely, uh, well, isn't it? Of course, they can't see us. The audience um, are all in massive feathers and quite revealing uh, yeah. sequined costumes. <laughs> it's quite something. It's like a carnival here, isn't it? it? A little bit, yeah. But, yeah, I can't help think we could have just done this in Elstree or somewhere. Well, we could have, but, yeah. you know, where's the... It's nice, though, but also having four weeks off afterwards it seems crazy to me. Yeah. But, you know, there it is. There it is. Nice. Well, make the most of it. Anyway, uh, thank you very much indeed, Richard. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head -head round, I'm afraid, it's Peter and Bully. <laughs> <sighs> Did you know Bruno's surname? I, I should, have... I should yeah. know it, but, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed it tonight. It's just one of those, just went out of my head. Well, but what the a very brilliant. good news is Craig Revel Horwood will be sitting at home and will be gutted. I mean, gutted that you can't remember his name. <laughs> well, you've got <laughs> Craig so and Revel. Gave me a bit of stick exactly. On the so you know, no way I was going to remember his name. That is yeah. the best revenge you could ever have over him, I think. Uh, anyway, Peter and Bully, it's been brilliant having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing. Brilliant performance, Peter and Bully, everyone. <laughs> But for Casey and Hope, it's now time for our pointless final. <laughs> Congratulations, Hope and Casey. You've fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot for your nominated charities. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,750. <laughs> Well, what a performance and what an apt close to this game. We have the captain of England women's football. We have one of the most successful coaches in the women's game ever. Well, you, in, the, in, in the group stages, you, you, you saw off Graham Lasso, you saw off Jonathan Pearce. Quarterfinals. Uh, saw off, you saw off George and Jeff, which yeah, I still just feel told... bad about. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one who had to tell George he's won the World Cup, that man. I had to tell him that Kiki Reigan is not an acceptable answer. <laughs> how, do you, how do you think I feel? Uh, and then in the semis, uh, you've seen off Schiltz and Bully. I mean, how incredible. So here we are. Essentially a sort of golden goal, isn't it? We're a bit um, in shock. Yeah. We had our cab ordered for about half an hour ago. <laughs> oh, really? We thought we were just, our target was just not to go out first. Fantastic. Well, as always, you get to choose your category for this final yeah. round. There are four choices. Let's see what they are. US cities in popular culture, goon films, Britpop's best albums, Young Achievers. Shall we go Rip Pop's best album? Uh, okay. <laughs> are you yeah, good at yeah. music? No, but you are, so we'll go for that. I'm not either. Okay, okay. Brit Pop's sure. best albums, Rich. Might just be on you, Casey. Yeah, uh, we're going to give you three <laughs> questions now. Give us an answer to any of these. We are looking for any of the tracks on the original release of the Oasis album, What's the Story, Morning Glory? So any of the tracks on the original release of that. Any of the tracks on the original release of Radiohead's OK Computer? or any of the tracks on the original release of Suede coming up. So any of the tracks on and the original releases of any of those three albums. Very, very best of luck. Okay. Can we change our category? <laughs> <laughs> now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that jackpot for your charities is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Are you ready? Yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. I'm pro Casey pretty much nice. going to head in the top one, because it's the yeah. only one I know. So I'm going to go She's Electric, I'm going to go What's the Story, Morning Glory, and I'm going to go Champagne Supernova. OK. Should we stop the clock right there? OK. Brilliant. 45 seconds left. OK, which of those do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? I don't actually know, so... Potentially Casey. She's Electric. I she's Electric will put last. Mm, and then Champagne L Supernova. Champagne Supernova, and the least likely to be pointless. Probably What's the Story, the... Morning Glory. OK. Let's pop those up on the board in that order, and here they are. We've got What's the Story, Morning Glory, Champagne Supernova, and She's Electric. Well, very, very best of luck. Now, let's say one of those is a pointless answer. Every chance, three good answers up there on the board. Um, what are your charities, Hope? Uh, mine's for Crohn's and Colitis UK. Um, charity very close to me. I had a friend that unfortunately passed away due to Crohn's disease, so that's my charity. Excellent. Casey? Mine is Make-A-Wish, uh, which is a charity for children and young people who have got life-threatening illnesses and they make their wishes come true. Very good indeed. Two excellent charities there. 
Two excellent charities. Let's hope one of these answers wins that jackpot for them. Uh, best of luck. As I say, your first answer, what's the story, Morning Glory, that was probably the least likely to be pointless? Only one of them has to be pointless, remember, for you to win that jackpot. For £2,750, let's find out how many people said what's the story, Morning Glory, was a track on the album of the same name. Oh! Oh! I wasn't expecting that. Um, <laughs> wow. Um, yes, yeah, so for some reason that is an incorrect answer. We'll discover at the end why. So only two more chances to win today's jackpot. Your next answer, Champagne Supernova. Again, we look at the tracks on What's the Story, Morning Glory. If it's right, it will win you the jackpot of £2,750. Let's find out. Champagne Supernova, is it pointless? It's right. Well, your first answer, what's the story, morning glory, turned out to be incorrect for some reason. This, on the other hand, absolutely right. Down it goes. Oh, ten. This is more like it. Ten for Champagne Supernova. Right, you only have one more chance to win today's jackpot. Everything is riding on your third and final answer. Happily, it's a brilliant answer. She's electric. You had no doubt about putting this one last. Let's find out. It has to be correct that it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot for £2,750. Let's find out. Is She's Electric a pointless answer? It's right. OK, what's the story, Morning Glory? Wasn't right. Champagne Supernova was, took us all the way down to ten. Now, She's Electric taking us down through the teens into single figures. Oh, four! Oh, thanks. <laughs> I tell you what, whatever way you look at it, four is a great score. Sadly, we are only interested in pointless answers in this final round. And you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, which means you don't win today's jackpot of £2,750. However, as it is a celebrity special, we're going to donate £500 to each celebrity pair for their respective charities. Uh, we have loved having you on the show. It's been brilliant having you here. And you've been so good throughout the show. Very, very well done. And you get to take home a pointless trophy. So there we are. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, unlucky, not a bad category for you. Casey obviously knew the album very well. The album is called What's the Story, Morning Glory. The track itself is just called Morning Glory, so we couldn't accept it, I'm afraid. Uh, but the other two, both very good answers. Um, there's only two pointless answers on the album, but if you know the album, you'll know them. There's a number one single here as well, Hey Now, and the number one single, Some Might Say, also a pointless answer. Well done if you said either of those at home. Uh, the Radiohead album is where most of the pointless answers are. Uh, Climbing Up the Walls is a pointless answer. A couple of bigger tracks here. Fitter, Happier and Lucky. Subterranean Homesick Alien was a pointless answer, as were Electioneering, Exit Music for a Film and The Tourist. All of those are pointless answers. And three pointless answers on Coming Up by Suede. You could have had Picnic by the Motorway, Star Crazy and The Chemistry Between Us. So thanks to everyone for coming on the show. You've been terrific as well. To everyone at home who's watching from England, come on England. From everyone watching from Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland, come on Costa Rica. And <laughs> everyone watching from the Netherlands, you don't pay your TV licence, so I've got no message for you, I'm afraid. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Well, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you, Hope and Casey, but it's been brilliant having you on the show. Thank you so much for playing. Hope and Casey. Thank you. Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.